Oculus Quest 2 is without a doubt the most popular VR headset of the year. It's decently powerful, it doesn't require a PC to play VR games, although you can do that if you want, it's relatively cheap, and all in all, it's just a pretty good system and it's shown a lot of people what VR can offer. But this comment made by John Carmack, consulting CTO of Oculus and father of Doom, has been bothering me for about a year now. With Quest 2, we're at a point where we have a fan and it uh, you know, it adds a lot to the cooling capability, but we are still not close to being able to run everything on the chip flat out. And that got me thinking, what happens if you upgrade the cooling? And I'm not talking about putting on a better or bigger fan, I'm talking about going all the way. What happens if you water cool a Quest 2? I mean, there are so many questions. Can you even water cool a VR headset? Are the performance gains really worth it? Or are there any performance gains at all? And you know, when I told people I was going to be water cooling a VR headset, everyone asked one question, why? And well, science isn't about why, it's about why not? So let's just get down to it. We've got some quests to cool. Officially, I am naming this the Doge Quest for obvious reasons. The components I'm using are super simple and really cheap. A 120 millimeter radiator that can be found for around $15, a very simple and cheap but most importantly small aluminum water block for the CPU, some water cooling tubing, a submersible water pump which will make sense in just a second, and a couple USB powered fans along with the battery bank. All in all, the parts and components will run you around $50. The idea being here, block goes on CPU, radiator goes on a camelback, and and the submersible water pump goes inside of the water reservoir, which, like I said, is a camelback. The next challenge is actually taking the headset apart. Well, turns out you can completely crack open a Quest 2 with a cheap set of tools and about 5 or 10 minutes. It's remarkably simple and I'm honestly surprised that more people haven't done it already. I tried to follow the only video on the internet that does a teardown, but I didn't even need it. Six screws on the inside hold the facial interface plastic, although be careful because there's a fragile ribbon cable for the proximity sensor attached that you'll have to unhook. After that, there's a few more screws holding the faceplate on, and then you could just pry the entire faceplate off the Quest. And I'd like to take a moment to appreciate how much technology is jam-packed inside of this headset. There's not a centimeter that doesn't have something important. And okay, enough with that. Mr. Carmack, I see exactly what you're talking about regarding cooling. This teeny tiny little fan is the only thing cooling the Quest 2, and we're about to change that. There are a few more screws to get this bracket removed, then unscrew the fan and heatsink assembly. And there you go. That's the XR2 right there. It took me a while to figure out how I should actually mount the water block. On a PC, you've got purpose-built slots with purpose-built water blocks. I don't exactly have that here. And I'm just trying to accomplish one goal. Conduct as much heat as possible from the CPU and move that heat into the water block, which that heat is carried away by the water and dissipated through the radiator. But I don't want this metal block touching anything else on the inside because that could cause a short and that'd mean game over and a dead quest. I'm not trying to kill a quest, I'm trying to cool it. So I know this is less than optimal, but I'm going to use the current copper to aluminium block that has these little fins on it and just knock the fins out and put my water block on top. There is an extra layer of metal between the cooling solutions, but hey, anything has to be better than this. And uh, not a sponsor, unfortunately, but I'm going to be using Thermal Grizzly Compound just a bit for the XR2, then put the copper plate back down and apply, honestly, way more compound than I needed to the top where I knocked all the fins off. This is no longer a smooth surface, and the more air that gets trapped between the water and the CPU means worse thermal efficiency. So I'm going to apply more than I need to fill in some of those voids and stick on the block. And here's where everything gets really sketchy. And I think now is about a good time to bring up, I'm not entirely following all of the traditional water cooling guidelines. I'm not necessarily using the right paste. I'm using aluminium, which is a worse heat conductor than copper. And none of these parts were really meant to work with each other. And that's okay though. If I had a little more time than just a day to make this video, I probably would have 3D printed an entire entirely new faceplate that holds my water block in perfectly, and it would have looked fantastic. But I just want to see if this works at all. So I put a hole in the faceplate with a knife. 
Also, be careful with knives, please. Then, all you have to do is stitch the headset back together and put on the faceplate that now has a cutout for your water block, throw on the tubing and some clamps, spill some water while testing out the water pump, <laughs> Uh, positive thing here, it works. Negative, uh, I'm wet, which uh, kind of turns into a running theme here. So, with the headset mostly put back together, I want to make sure the headset still works. There are no leaks, since, you know, a leak on the headset doesn't exactly sound like the best of times. So, we're running into one small issue. It's turning on, uh, it's going through the full startup procedure. In fact, it's even registering controllers, but it's just having a black screen, and we can't get out of that. It's possible, maybe it's worth a chance that uh, it needs the fan plugged in. So let's go check that out. And turns out that was exactly the problem. Just like how your PC will freak out if there's no CPU fan, if the fan on a Quest 2 either stops or is unplugged, a bunch of really funky issues start coming up like a perpetual black screen or notifications that you can't get out of. So in order to get everything working, I just plugged the fan back in, took off the housing, and routed it back through the hole I made. Simple solution. And right now, the Quest 2 fully works. There are no apparent leaks, and this whole procedure took me quite literally about two hours to do, and I've never had a quest to open before. And we'll see if it's all worth it, but first, it's time for my favorite part of any Waterloo. So, the Waterloo is now running. We've got the fans running. I'm just purging the system of air a little bit. We've got a beautiful pink match. <laughs> The VR cover. But you know, how can we take this one step further? RGB. Now, arguably the most important part of this entire experiment and video, I mean, yeah, we proved that you can water cool a Quest 2. It works, and of course, it keeps the headset cooler. In fact, I was measuring slightly higher than ambient temperatures at 70 degrees Fahrenheit with the water block after about 30 minutes of playing 11 table tennis, versus about an 80 to 90 degree temperature on a stock Quest through the plastic shield. And in case you're wondering, just the die itself got all the way up to 100 and 20 degrees Fahrenheit, way too hot, do not run the quest without something on it for longer than a few seconds. You'll end up killing it. So, it's significantly cooler now, and in my opinion, it's also cooler. But what about performance? Something that shocked me is Oculus has a really good benchmarking and performance tool that you can sideload anybody can. I wish I knew about this sooner because, to be honest, I would have used it in many videos, but this tool allows you to see CPU utilization on all cores, GPU utilization, FPS, and a ton of other stats, except for actual temperature readouts, unfortunately. And the two games I want to test out may shock you a little, VR chat, of course, because, well, VR chat doesn't perform well, often dipping into the single digits of FPS on a Quest 2 if you're in a crazy lobby, and 11 table tennis. This is because you can actually change the graphic settings on the Quest version and absolutely crush your own headset with frame dips down to the 30s and 40s and even lower. There's no point in testing games that already consistently hit 90 plus FPS. I want to see if I'm able to squeeze anything else out of this chip. And 11 table tennis with all the graphics maxed out on the stock quest 2 we saw the app hang at about 40 fps with occasional dips into the single digits the doge quest um how do i say this well it's the exact same the app hangs at 40 fps with occasional dips utilization was almost the exact same even though we were like 10 to 40 degrees cooler now what about vr chat well, in my home world that was made for Thrill Seeker meetups, Club Meta, I averaged around 52 FPS. And in Just Be Club, with a nearly full instance, I averaged around 24 FPS. On the Doge Quest, however, I got a slightly higher average in my Club Meta at around 59, and with Just Be Club, I hung at around 24 FPS as well. I'm assuming the Club Meta stats with better FPS was due to margin of error. So, water cooling the Quest 2. I didn't really need a Y but I did want to legitimately see if it could be done, which, check, it can be. But also, I wanted to see if there were any performance gains that could be had by giving the Quest 2 some more thermal headroom, and there certainly are performance gains to be had. We significantly cooled the headset, like way overkill by as much as 20 to 30 degrees at times, but the clock speeds look to be locked by Oculus. And this isn't something that can be fixed by simple water cooling or a better fan, and you know, no, that does kind of suck. We're gonna have to figure out a way to really overclock it. But I gotta say something. I feel like right now is when I should say, kids, don't try this at home. 
And honestly, for all legal purposes, don't try this at home. You'll likely be voiding any warranty you have on your headset, and the likelihood that you break your headset beyond repair is pretty darn high. But at the same time, this is your hardware that you bought, and if you want to do something cool with it, it's really not that hard. It's a few screws, to be honest. And all we really need to do is find a way to overclock the Quest 2, because once we do that, then maybe we'll be finally able to squeeze every possible bit of performance out of this headset, and future iterations as well. This is a device limited by thermals, we already know that, but it's also limited by the firmware. And in the future, I'd like to do a super small water loop like we've seen for some phones, and if we do end up unlocking the Quest at some point, I will be giving this another go to see just how far we can push the Quest and its hardware. If you're interested in this whole DIY thing, um, then join in my Discord if you have any questions regarding this, I'd love to see you in there, it's just a great VR community. And I want you all to remember, no matter what, we are VR. Much love, thrill out.